Manx Radio Saturday Live Lounge, supported by Villa Gaiety. For the latest Watson information, visit villagaiety.com. Hello, I'm John Watterson, and I perform the songs of Jake Thackeray, and I will be doing a concert in Peel on Saturday the 18th of May. Uh, John, it's lovely to talk to you um, and thank you for taking the time. We're very excited about you being mm-hmm. here, uh, performing as fake Thackeray, of course, because sadly Jake Thackeray no longer with us. Um, you sent me some info before our chat and I have to admit, until you sent me your info, I hadn't realised Jake Thackeray performed here. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, going back to the early 70s, um, a folk club started in the Isle of Man. It started off in the uh, Falcon Cliff, uh, around the corner from, from where we were living. And so the organiser was um, the guy called Ron Atkinson, I think, organised it, and uh, Dave and Ken Nichol from, uh, uh, Nicholson from uh, the music shop. Anyway, the folk club in the, uh, in the Falcon Cliff, and they used to bring over really, really funny artists like Mike, Mike Harding, uh, Jasper Carrot, and it was a fabulously entertaining evening. And then one day, this this guy, Jake Zachary, came along. And we'd been used to seeing him on the telly because he did a programme on Sunday nights called Braden's Week, uh, which sort of morphed into That's Life with Esther Ranson. And Jake's job on that show was to do a, a one song, a topical, usually funny. Uh, and so you, you, you just got four minutes of Jake on a Sunday night. And then he appeared at this folk club in, in glorious Technicolor and you got the full 90 minutes. And I, as a teenager, I wasn't particularly interested in language or poetry or anything like that, but I was absolutely blown away by what somebody could do with the English language and a, 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 and a guitar. It was just, um, he had the whole room almost incontinent with laughter. And I, I was just, how can, how can somebody do that with words? You know, it was just really, really amazing. Such such a, a fabulous songwriter. And I was uh, I was hooked on Jake and followed his career uh, in, in the UK uh, after that. Well, that's the thing, because I think that the thing about him was, I mean, he was so distinctive, incredibly distinctive. And it was sort of part poetry, part sort of novelty song, but all tied together with super, Superb musicianship and just exquisite delivery, wasn't it? And I think it's there was it's sort of there was something of the sort of naughty British postcard about his songs, wasn't there? There, 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 there definitely was. He he was heavily influenced by the French tradition, the chanson tradition, and a couple of um, I learned this I learned this through um, researching for the biography. Uh, but a couple of French singer songwriters, in particular, a chap called uh, George Brassens, who. Um, uh, his uh, Brassens' performance was just all about the words. The guitar was sitting there underneath doing something, but they were songs about people, about life and love and death, and and they were funny and they were sad and all sorts of things. And Jake spent some time in France, and and that's where his songwriting developed. So when he came back to the UK after about four years in France, and started writing songs in this style, there was really nothing like him. There was um, there the, 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 there was and is. Uh, since there have been very few people that can use the language the same way. I guess Victoria Wood uh, was in a similar style. She was a massive Jake Thackeray fan. Richard Stilgo, uh, same sort of thing. But just sitting and putting words together in a way that will make people laugh and cry and feel all the emotions. And yes, there was a there was a, a saucy side. There was um, there, there, there was artful vulgarity. I think I would call it. It was it was the words themselves were never rude. There were no swear words in there, but it was all innuendo. It was all suggestive, and you knew what he was getting at. And he would create pictures inside your head uh, without using you know any bad language or anything like that. And I suppose for all the reasons you've just said, it is no mean feat to decide to take on the role of Jake Thackeray as you have done. But you've received some fabulous praise, especially you just mentioned Richard Stilgo there, you know, as, as sort of a peer. And, and he has given you a fabulous review among, and Mike Harding as well, which is superb. That they, must mean so much to you. They have. And a, a few months ago, I had the absolute honour of... of opening about 20 shows for Jasper Carrot wow. as well, who was a, a, a big uh, Jake, Jake Thackeray fan. Um, I mean, I'm not, I don't try to be Jake and I will never be Jake. I, I perform the songs to the best of my ability, but it's all about celebrating what a fantastic, clever, funny wordsmith he is. And 
you know, the songs are best heard live. You can you, know, you can listen to the CD or you can read the songs as poems. They all work as, as poems. But to stand in front of an audience and just have that privilege to get a little bit of what he must have felt like in the in the Falcon Cliff in 1974. That is just <laughs> such an honour for me and I love doing it. Oh, my word. I mean, can you imagine like being able to talk to yourself as a teenager there and say, do you know what? In the future. <laughs> Incredible. Well, yeah, that was, that, that was what I, I thought at that time. I mean, I, I, no, I, no, no inclination of being a performer. And for 35 years, I had a you know, a proper job in management, it's nothing to do with performing. But I'd always thought just being able to walk into a room full of strangers and by the end of it, have them laughing and and, and just really marvelling at these wonderful songs. I thought, what a, what, a, what a wonderful thing that must be to do. And in my own little way, I'm doing it now. And I'm, 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 ever, so, I'm ever so proud to stand on the, sh- the shoulders of this giant and be able to to uh, to get a little bit of the feedback and the feeling that he must have got. Oh, well, your respect and admiration for him absolutely shines through, it, John. It really does. And and as you, as you, you've mentioned to me, you were born on the island and grew up in Williston. Uh, so we're delighted yes. that someone from the Isle of Man is is doing this. It's fantastic to hear. <laughs> but you, you you're sort of hinting though that um, you didn't really or hadn't really done any other kind of performance. Had, were you a musician already, or did you have to sort of learn the entire thing? I started playing the guitar when this folk club started in the Falcon Cliff, and a friend, a friend of mine, Dave, Dave Spears, who's still on the island and, and performs with, with uh, 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 friends, um, we decided we were going to try and do a little bit. of So we'd go to the folk club, we'd rehearse a couple of songs, me on the guitar and Dave on the mandolin, and we would both be literally violently ill uh, <laughs> you know, ten, 10 minutes before. I mean, it was a room full of 20 people, it was, and they're all friendly faces, and they'd all had a little drink. It was absolutely the least scary audience in the world. But if you're not used to public speaking or yeah. not used to performing, that was that was uh, yeah that was really really scary. so my sort of performing life was was limited to to doing odd little spots and the occasional Jake Thackeray song um, at uh, at folk folk clubs both on the island and elsewhere and then when Jake died in 2002 I just thought wouldn't it be nice to be able to do some more I knew about four or five songs but wouldn't it be nice to do a few more and I was working away from home so I had time in the evening so I would learn each week I would learn one Jake Thackeray song and then I would take it down to the local folk club that was uh, very very traditional and didn't really think that Jake Thackeray was folk music but they'd tolerate me and I'd go in and I'd, I'd perform the song I'd learned that week and then I'd go back and learn another one just for fun and just to see if I could uh, just to see how many Jake Thackeray songs I could I could learn and then uh, I did a couple of charity concerts here in our, our village just outside York and they went well and it's just become a, the most glorious little hobby ever since. Oh, I can hear, I can hear it in your voice. It's fabulous to hear. And I, I have to tell you, you talk about being nervous in front of a crowd. If it makes you feel any better, the very first gig I did at a, a, a little pub down here at the, called the Trafalgar in Douglas, uh, I oh, turned yeah, up nice. wearing two entirely different shoes and didn't notice till halfway through my first song because <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous. <laughs> so, that, did that become your thing then? You had to do it every time? Do you know, I wish I had because maybe then I'd be famous now because I'd have an angle. But yeah. no, it did. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. You'd be that famous star, Christy Odshoe. Exactly. Oh, you can be my PA and my manager, thanks. <laughs> well, listen, since then, though, I mean, it has to be said that that Jake or Fake has certainly taken you to some fabulous places and given you some incredible experiences, hasn't he? Absolutely. Uh, um, I mean, my most enjoyable gigs are, are the sort of smaller, intimate ones, um, as indeed it was, Jake, because that's where the music work, works best. But I've really been, you know, privileged to tour with uh, Fairport Convention, um, and they, they they do a, um, a festival each year, it's called Crop Ready, mm-hmm. um, which, which is attended by 15,000 people. So I had my 15 minutes of fame, well, my one hour of fame at Crop Ready Festival in front of 15,000 people. Now... Fifteen thousand people did not pay to come and see me. You know, <laughs> there were there were there were thirty acts on that weekend. <laughs> but but in my head, you know, that's that's my biggest audience. Fifteen thousand fifteen thousand people. But um, uh, no, I've I've been and, and toured, as I say, with with Jasper Carrot and on Edinburgh Fringe, and just just had a, a second career uh, after uh, after I retired from my my first one, and it's just. Um, it's just a, a real 
privilege. I'm really fortunate to be able to do what I absolutely love doing. Oh, I'm sure. And you say 15,000 is a lot, but to be fair, you've performed many more because you've been you've performed on Radio 4, haven't you? And radio, you've been part of Radio 2 documentary, so I mean, and Radio 3, of course. So you, you must have actually performed in many, many more than that. Well, yeah, the Radio 4 thing was, 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 was really was really where the idea for a biography started because I, I, I got the invitation to go down and do a programme called uh, Great Lives with Matthew Paris on Radio 4. And, and on that programme, they talk about people, people who have died uh, and they discuss with somebody whether uh, it was a great life. And I got the invitation to go down to uh, to do that, and I got really, really nervous because it's you know national radio, and I thought, oh dear, I'm you know I, I, a little bit of I don't know uh, what right have I got to go on national radio and talk about this guy? And I got, I got really, and then I thought, I know what I'll do um, because most of the people who are on Great Lives are biographers of uh, the people they're talking about. So I thought. I will tell them I'm writing a biography on Jake Thackeray. Now, at that time, I wasn't. <laughs> but but that was my justification to myself, so that if anybody could say, you know, what are, you know, what are you doing here? Well, actually, I'm researching and writing a biography on Jake Thackeray. And, uh, and that, that, that gave me the self-confidence to go on and do the programme. And, uh, and and I mentioned, he said, oh, and I hit, you know, writing a biography, yes, yes, yes. And I, I came back home to York on the train. I thought, I got away with that. And the day after that, Jake's son, Sam, uh, it phoned me up and he said, oh, I hear you writing a biography on Dad. That sounds like a great idea. Can, can I help? So that was, that was like, the, you know, the next eight years of my life were because of that one little fib. I felt. <laughs> How wonderful. I mean, had you had any connection with Jake's family prior to that? I had, uh, yeah, they'd been to a couple of gigs and we'd exchanged uh, emails and, and they were, they'd come and sort of take the mickey out of my performance and stuff. They're really nice guys. So, but yeah, the idea of a biography hadn't hadn't come up. I, I can't believe I'm, I'm, I'm admitting to this on radio. <laughs> we'll have to edit. We'll have to edit I won't tell anyone. Don't worry. It'll just go out to the three listeners I've got. So you're OK. <laughs> OK. okay. <laughs> but, that, that, but now it's out. So, you know, you are now a published author as well. So uh, tell us a little bit about it then. Yeah, I spent I spent a long time researching, and uh, the Thackeray family were very, very helpful and supportive, and gave me all Jake's working papers and stuff. It was great, um, and I got part way through, and I'd never undertaken a project of that size before, um, and I enlisted the help of uh, a friend of mine who is an equal Thackeray geek, uh, uh, friend called Paul Thompson, and. Uh, between us, Paul, uh, Paul then uh, sort of, uh, he's, he's a former headmaster. And so Paul would send me homework each week. You know, I want a thousand words on this topic <laughs> on the book. So, so that's what I absolutely needed. So between, it's a joint authorship book between me, me and Paul Thompson. It took us, I say, eight, eight years, but it's been, it was really, really well, well received. And uh, yeah, it's something we're really proud of. It's a, it's a niche thing, as, as indeed Jake was a niche thing. But um, we, uh, we're we very pleased to have been able to, to uh, tell his story. I mean, you say niche, but to be honest, he has an extraordinary fan base and probably more so, I think, since he's died, hasn't he, really? Well, you know, I, I think so. I, I am getting more and more younger people mm -hmm. that come along to, to gigs. And no offence to anybody of a certain age, but if I go to a gig and there's like, you know, 20 people uh, in front who are, are in their 20s. I think, oh, cracky, what are they doing here? And and um, Six Music has helped. Jake gets a lot of play on Six Music. He does, yeah. There was a programme called Meet the Richardsons on Dave TV mm -hmm. with comedian John Richardson and his wife. And that's a lot about Jake. John, John is a massive Jake Thackeray fan. Um, uh, Lisa Tarbuck on Radio 2 plays Jake. So there is, I think, an increasing... Recognition. I get a lot of people, younger people coming up and say, "Oh, my, my dad used to play this in the car on the way to school and stuff." And I've introduced my mates to it. So, I, I, I hope, I hope I'm encouraging a, or helping with a, a little bit of a, a Jake revival because it's, it's, it, it's so good, and the vast majority of his work is timeless. One, one or two songs are about things that went on at the time, sort of topical songs for uh, Braden's Week and that's life. But most of it is just about, it's about people and you just see and hear yourself reflected in these songs. And I see, you know, husbands and wives looking at each other, saying, oh, you're like this or you're like that. It's just uh, a, a joy to be able to do. Well, I'd say some of his observational humour humor is extraordinary, isn't it? It really is. <laughs> It it is, and as I say, we I, there's, there's some songs where I do see couples looking at mm -hmm. each other. If it's a song, maybe it's a song about um, 
was one particular song called La Di Da. Yeah, I love and, that. And, and 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 the premise of the song is a man saying to a woman, "I love you so much that I want to marry you, despite your gruesome family." <laughs> and that's that's the idea behind the song. And it's 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 a great song. But but I do see you know couples looking at each other, and I, and and each accusing the other of having that family in the song. Absolutely. Um, but, <laughs> it is it's one of my favourites so we'll definitely be playing that one I think that for, for sure but I think as well the thing that I find quite encouraging about you saying there's younger people now that you see younger faces in the audience is that doesn't just mean that they're appreciating Jake it means that they're also appreciating the the mastery of the language and the fact that because oh, yes. there's an intelligence to what he did and what you are now doing and so if they're appreciating that that sort of sets us in good stead doesn't it? The, the 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 words are are fiercely intelligent, mm-hmm. and and the 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 audience at a, a Thackeray gig has to work hard as well. It's not um, uh, they're not songs where you can have a chat part way through and sort of catch up on a chorus or anything like that. But it's it's the songs that you have to listen and focus and concentrate, and it may not be to the last line that you really get what he's what he's going on about. So it it is really really intelligent uh, humour, and um, but everybody everybody gets it, everybody mm-hmm. understands it. Um, but he, he made no compromises in his language. If there was a particular word that he wanted to use in a song, then he would not dumb down. He would not find a sort of patronising way of saying it. He would use the word he wanted to use. And if you didn't understand it, then, you know, look it up in a dictionary when you get home. <laughs> <laughs> Quite right, too. It's an educational thing. Uh, well, listen, I should ask then, um, what can we expect from this gig from you then? From I mean, we're getting a pretty good idea anyway, but on the 18th, so uh, a week this evening when we're playing out this interview, uh, you will yep. be here at the Centenary Centre. It's a very special gig, which we'll come to in a moment, but what can we expect? What's, what songs can we expect? Because I think there may be some songs that maybe some of us may not have heard before. There will be. I mean, the, the, the classics and the favourites, and I love doing them, are, are things like uh, Sister Josephine mm-hmm. um, and the Bantam Cock and the, the Blacksmith and the Toffee Maker. The, there are timeless songs. On again, but on again. Will you do on again, on again? Absolutely do on again, on again. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, probably the most controversial one. I usually leave that to the end and then run away. <laughs> uh, but also during the research for the biography, Paul and I managed to find 15 songs that... Um, were never recorded uh, onto, onto an album. There were songs that maybe Jake performed once on a BBC programme and then it was never, you know, not heard for 40 years. So we, we found 15 little lost gems that we put onto uh, an album. So I will be including some songs from uh, from that, that uh, some unheard of, uh, unheard classics, well, unheard for 40 years. Oh, uh, what a great. treat. Some lost gems and a few little stories about uh, about Jake, but it will be mostly mostly songs and a little bit of chat about the man. Oh, fantastic! And it is a special gig for you, this, isn't it? It is. Uh, my 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 brother Jeff passed away just uh, almost a year ago, and I was uh, over on the island and I, and I I posted a picture. I think I posted a picture of the calf of man while I was there because I like taking pictures of the calf of man and putting them on Facebook. And uh, Dave McLean from the Centurion Centre uh, got in touch and said, oh, you're back on the island, you fancy doing a gig? And obviously he didn't realise the circumstances why I was over there. But I, I got back in touch and said, well, I'd love to do a gig next year, but can we do it in aid of the hospice? Because um, I hadn't realised what a fantastic job hospices do. Most of us, fortunately, don't come into contact with hospices that frequently. But, uh, you know, Jeff's, Jeff's last days in the hospice, the, the care they took, um, that was just absolutely ma- magnificent and just made all the difference to his last days. And we were ever so grateful as a family. So I said to David, Let, you know, can we do one in aid of the, uh, of the hospice? And David said, well, he'd had a very similar experience a couple of years ago uh, with his mum. So he said, well, we'll uh, the the, uh, the centre will put all of their proceeds into the pot as well. So every every penny uh, from this gig will go to the, the hospice in, in, in appreciation of the, of the wonderful work they do. Oh, they really do. And what a thing. So we can come and enjoy uh, the music and anecdotes of Jake Thackeray performed by yourself, John, mm-hmm. uh, and also know that we're doing something really good for a fabulous organisation here on the island. As yeah, you said, well, I was going to say, you can come along to the gig and even if you hate what's going on, you do a good thing. <laughs> But I, I think you've phrased it better. 
<laughs> well, that's, do you why, know, that's why you're a radio presenter and I'm not. <laughs> I can't imagine anyone <laughs> hating this because it's going to be so much fun. You're going to bring so much joy to the Centenary Centre next week. I know you I are. So. Uh, well, I listen, so. I can't let you go before um, I chuck my firsts at you. So this is a new feature okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we've been sure. doing on the live line. So I'm going to I'm going to get you to, to really think back now. Uh, not that we haven't just been doing that anyway, but, you know, uh, can okay. you remember John Watson, a.k.a. Fake Thackeray, uh, the first album you ever bought and also yes. what format? Because it's interesting to know if people bought their first album on vinyl or CD or cassette or whatever. Right. Well, I remember my dad getting a Danset record player and getting Dusty Springfield's Island of Dreams. What a weird memory that is. Mm. Back. But my first one that I bought would be Genesis, Genesis Foxtrot. I was a huge Genesis fan when I was uh, younger. So, yeah, Foxtrot, and it was um, a proper LP that you could take out from the shop, and it was inside a paper sleeve, inside its cover, and you'd opened it up and you'd get the words of the songs and pictures and all the graphics and stuff. So, yeah, a proper LP is you what see, it was. That's, the, that's the, the, the hard format is so much more satisfying, isn't it, for so many reasons. Exactly. And, yeah, and it's yeah. great that it's coming yeah. back now. You know, CD's not so it much, is. but, you know, vinyl and even cassette coming back now, which is fantastic. Yes. Yes, um, yes. OK, then, do you remember the first gig you went to? Um, well, I'll, apart from the folk club, um, not the hoople at the Lido. Oh, what I, a gig. I was, I was not old enough to get in, but my older brother Jeff and his mates sort of smuggled me in as part of a as part of a group. And, uh, yeah, they were, I remember they were a bit very, very, very loud. <laughs> <laughs> I remember being pinned against the wall with the sound. But, yeah, that was my first. Not the hoople at the Lido. Oh, superb. What a good one. Um, OK, <laughs> then what about your first ever performance? You may have already mentioned it in our chat, but do you remember your first performance, what it was like? Yeah, I, I, I do, and we have already mentioned it. Falcon Cliff, uh, having spent a week in the bedroom learning this song with my mate Dave and going on and, and, and actually performing a song as a sort of support act for who, whichever guest was on. Mm -hmm. And it was absolutely terrifying, and I have really no memory of what we did or how we did it. I just remember the the terror beforehand and spending 15 minutes in the loo before going on and then it's a complete blank. So I'm fairly sure Dave and I performed something but I've no idea what it was or how it was received. Were you at least wearing the same shoes? <laughs> <laughs> Not as each other, but on, yes, on my own. Yes. <laughs> well, I have to say, it's been an absolute joy catching up with you, John, and we cannot wait for you to be here to perform as Jake Thackeray. Uh, I love this title that has come out, An Audience Without Jake Thackeray, which I just think is such a great title. So I checked be... with his son Sam, was he happy with that? Because it's a little bit cheeky. Exactly. It suits, yeah. doesn't it? Um, so there'll be the music, as we know, some unheard songs as well, and some anecdotes, uh, and it's all for a fabulous cause. Thanks for taking the time and enjoy your time back here on the Isle of Man. It's wonderful to talk to you and thanks ever so much for your help. Manx Radio Saturday Live Lounge, supported by Villa Gaiety. For the latest Watson information, visit villagaiety.com.